All right, let's play a game. I want you to close your eyes and I'm gonna say a word and I want you to remember the first thing that comes to your mind right after I say it, okay? The word is persona. Okay, stop, stop right there. Try not to think of anything else. What came to your mind right after I said that word? Most of you probably thought up some random anthropomorphic animal character. Heck, maybe it was even yours. But if I had to guess, I'm willing to say that the species of that persona that you thought of was some sort of wolf or dog. Was I right? Well, even if yours wasn't a canine, there's a good chance that someone else watching this did think of one. And I know that because that's kind of how personas work. Let me explain. So this month on this channel, we've been discussing all things Fursona species in the furry fandom. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of those other videos. But for today, as much as it pains me personally, we're gonna talk about personas that are canines, specifically wolves and dogs. Now, this should come as no surprise. Heck, even those who aren't furries probably know this, but a majority of the characters that we create in this fandom are some sort of wolf or dog. In fact, if you exclude hybrids, wolves and dogs are the first and third most popular persona species in this fandom respectively, which means roughly one in every 10 furries you will meet will have a wolf or a dog sona. And honestly, to me, that feels pretty low. This is such a common theme in this fandom that dogs and wolves have become the butt of some common jokes in this fandom as well. Heck, the very first YouTube video I ever made poked fun at the stereotype that the default furry persona is some kind of blue wolf. In fact, if you actually go back and remember what you thought of when I asked you to close your eyes and think of a persona in the intro, I'd also wager to guess that the animal you thought of was also blue in some way. So I think it's safe to say that this fandom mostly consists of furries with wolves or dogs as personas, and the reasons why are pretty well documented at this point. Again, not to toot my own horn, but the first video I made went over why blue wolves are so common in the fandom, and long story short, it's because we as humans see a lot of them. We all have at least some understanding of what wolves are and how they're portrayed in media. And that's even more so with dogs, since many of us either grew up with one as a pet or knew someone who did. All of that sums up to the average furry being more exposed to wolves or dogs than any other animal, and therefore can make an easier connection with one when choosing an animal species for their fursona, which is great enough on its own, but it actually brings up an interesting problem for all of those canine furries in the fandom. How do they tell each other apart? Or I guess a less loaded way of asking that is how do they balance the individuality and uniqueness of their specific persona without simply being bundled into the rest of the personas with the same base species, relegating them to just being considered a, another furry wolf or dog? Well, I did a little research on it and after taking a look, there seems to be two prevailing solutions that wolf and dog personas have to this problem both of which try to make their very common base dog or wolf persona a little bit more unique by adding specificity. Why did I choose that word? It, it's such a hard word to say, specificity. Or in other words, they do it by being specific on what kind of dog or wolf they are. L let me show you how. Now, even though both wolves and dogs help differentiate each other by narrowing down their kind, how the two species approach this problem have some key differences, even though both strategies can be applied to either species, which we'll come back to towards the end. Let's start with dogs because this one is probably the most obvious. I mean, think about it. How many furries do you know who have dog personas that actually called their persona species a dog? Like they introduced themselves as name the dog. Not many, right? Instead, what they do is refer to themselves by the breed of their dog persona. If you're in the fandom, you probably know German Shepherd furries, Collie furries, Lab furries, it, the list goes on. And that's on purpose, specifying what breed of dog your persona makes your persona distinctly different from any other dog persona. And they don't just do this for name, this pretty much goes for every aspect of the persona as well. The, the art is different, the personalities are different. Heck, even the persona or fursuit props that go along with the character are different as as well. And sure, even though some breeds are more popular than others, they still accomplish the goal of differentiating from one another, avoiding all of them being lumped together to something just being called dogs. So that's how the dogs do it. What about the wolves? This one is fun because we actually have some data to work with here. If you notice the first graph I showed you on persona popularity, wolves were actually not the longest bar on that graph. 
The group of fursona species in this phantom that are even more popular than wolves are hybrid fursonas. For those who don't know, hybrids are fursonas that are made up of two or more species that are combined into one mixed creature that serves as the individual's fursona. I have a video on why furries make them in the first place that you could check out for more information. But what does this have to do with wolves? Well, if you look a bit deeper into what species are being used for these hybrid sonas, you'll find that four of the top five hybrid combinations are part wolf. This means that the most common way that wolves differentiate from one another is by combining with another species entirely or make it a hybrid. Now I admit this might seem a little bit confusing at first. like. How does adding another species, which might have its own array of more specific or regional renditions, make a persona more unique than just a wolf itself? Well, think about it like this. What adding that extra species to the persona does is essentially act as a second or third or how many extra identifier to the persona as a whole. So someone who has something like a part dragon, part wolf sona is inherently more unique and more specific than someone with just a wolf persona. And because there are so many options to make a hybrid out of, the one that someone chooses to add to the wolf base has a really good chance of being unique on its own. Using that same example, I'm willing to bet a good amount of money that there are a lot fewer dragon wolves than there are simply wolves in this fandom, making the former stand out that much more. Plus you get to create fun new words that only make sense in this fandom, like Drolf, which goes even further into taking the wolf out of things. So yeah, those are the two prevailing strategies that wolves and dogs implement to help make themselves a little bit more unique. And the cool thing about this is that they can mix and match both of these to make themselves even more unique. There are hybrid sonas that are part dog everywhere in this fandom, and wolves can niche down to the type of wolves they are as well. In fact, technically, these aren't even restricted to dogs and wolves. These ideas can be applied to any animal species in this fandom. But even with that being said, it just takes on a special meaning for our wolf and dog friends, since there, there are a lot of them. But even though there are a lot, they too deserve to be treated as unique individuals in this fandom with their own specific personas. So yeah, maybe the next time someone tells you to close your eyes and think of a persona, maybe something a little bit more specific comes to mind other than just a dog or just a wolf. Ah, who am I kidding? That's what everyone is still going to think anyway. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one, but until then, stay wild out there. Peace.